Hi everybody, in my last Moto Guzzi video I was redoing the ignition. I changed the contact points, <coughs> but they did not really fit that well, so I had to file around and fizzle around to make it work. It initially worked fine, but after driving for two miles it started to sputter again and didn't really want to take the gas anymore. So I opened her up again and voila, the ignition changed over the two miles of driving. Instead of filing more and fizzling around more, I decided to buy an electronic ignition. I bought a Dynatec 3, which fits for the Moto Guzzi. In this video, I will explain how I installed it. The included paper instructions were from a different motorcycle, but you can find the Moto Guzzi instructions at Dynatec online. So here's my Dyna 3 module. Let the installation begin. Let me disconnect the battery. As a next step, I need to take off that cover on the left side because that's where the two coils are. The coils are new. I replaced them a couple years ago. The instruction says to connect the clamp with that module here. I guess what they mean is to unscrew this. Then I guess they want me to insert it here. Yep, that would fit. And keep wiggling it. No. Yeah, First approach didn't work, I have to push this further in. So here's the longer side, because the frame is not that thick. So let's try that again. Go in here. I need to pull the other side away. Those things that are there, and then okay, feel free to use technology if available. <laughs> Good enough for now. The instruction says get the two coils. There is one white wire going to one coil. I guess that's this one. Looks pretty white. Then it says there's a short black blue wire that connects the two points. I don't see black blue but I see black white that connects the two. And then it says Connect the separate red wire included with the kit to the spare spade terminal that is available on the positive terminal of that coil. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't have a spare thing here. So I definitely don't have any spare connectors down here. I guess they want me to connect it to that one. So, let's make a spare connector. So I found this little thing in my garage and that should work to make it two connections, I guess. So, I think how it probably works is I bend that thing also outward and upward. So, and then I can connect that white wire thing. With one side of it. So here goes the one part. Back there goes the original. 
Let me slide that on more. And then I can as do the red wire thing. I believe that's what they mean with the red wire and it's in that little bag. Here we go, that's that little wire. Let me take that rubber thing off. So this can connect and then it has a few inches of red wire to it. So let me connect the beast. Voila, done. Then it says take the red wire that comes from the module and connect it with the red wire you just installed over there. So I have different red wires. Here is a red wire that has such a terminal. I need that later. Then I have two red wires. The one is male, the other one is female connector. What I got from down here is a female, so these two need to get together. But let me first route it a little nicer. I'm in the right area here. So this is the wire coming from the module. This is the wire I just installed. And connect it together. Yep. And yeah. Okay. And I guess we can make it pretty later. Next it says to remove the screws that hold the plate to the housing. Disconnect the red and green wires where they plug into the wire harness. I'm not sure, yeah, you can see that those the that are those two cables if I remember right. So let me disconnect the green cable and disconnect the red cable. Okay, and then I unscrew that stuff. I do that offline because you don't want to watch me screw around here. The screws that hold the plate down to the housing have that little metal clip. I believe we need those later, so don't put them too far away. I need to remove the screws that hold the condenser. Those are, you can see my screwdriver, so those are the screws down there. And likewise on the opposite side of it. Those condensers are new, but I guess that's a waste of money now. And not needed anymore. the screw and now it says remove the entire points plate condenser assembly so that's already the set point connectors and here is the plate it says make sure that the top of the housing is clean so I use some contact lenser and rub it off with it. Oh, looks shiny. How shiny it looks. A little bit more. It now says install the plate with the cable facing to the back. Okay. Put the blade on. And use one of those screws and metal clips we had removed previously. That thing and secure it on the front. I don't need to tighten it down real, real strong, just a little bit. It then says route the wires through the other chromat and secure it with the other clip. I'll do that offline because most of what you would see on the video would be my hands. 
this is how it looks like now. It says before tightening the screws, make sure they don't obstruct the holes for the cover. Uh, I think it's good enough for now. Let me tighten it. As I'm double checking, I realized I forgot number step number three, which means take that black wire with the ring and securely connect it to a screw for example on the engine. Don't take anything on the frame. Take something from the engine. So I'm taking off uh, that valve cover screw. Voila. And I'll connect it here. Good enough. Then take the Allen wrench and turn the engine clockwise until we have the D show up in this little window here. So here's the D. Let me turn the engine a little bit back. And bring it so that next second line aligns with the line here. That should be perfect now. Attention, you must have the compression cycle when you do that. Since I have two left hands, I was doing it with the exhaust cycle. And then later, when I want to do adjust the timing for the left cylinder, it was off by 180 degrees. So when you look for the D, keep your finger on the spark plug opening to feel the air pushing out. Then you are in your compression cycle. Then it says to push that rotor down until its flange is in contact with the top of the cam. I guess that's how it's supposed to look like. It says to rotate until the mark on top aligns with the mark on the left, which is the right cylinder on the good seat. It aligns. Once it aligns, it says to push the rotor down and tighten it with the screws that came supplied with it. And that's a very fiddling job here. I'm not sure if they expect people to have fingers made from rubber. Let me try this offline. Easy as it. There's a screw, there's a screw on the side, and I need to tighten it with that little Allen wrench. The only way for me to tighten the screws was to basically rotate the crankshaft or whatever that thing is called, until the screw shows up on that side and then I can basically hook up the Allen wrench and tighten it. After that's done I rotate it back to make sure it's still aligned. So if I align it here I still have the D mark at the right place. It then says to validate that the rotor never touches the sensor. There should be only a certain gap between it and if you rotate it, it should never get in touch with it. And I can rotate it and it never gets in touch with it. So that part works. So next it says to connect the three, these three cables that come out of the sensor, white, black and red to its equivalence on the module we already installed there. So let me route these cables offline. So here's my white cable. And I connect to white. Here's my black cable. And I connect to black. And of course here's the red cable. And I connect to red. And I'm routing that stuff a little later. For now it's just pushing out of the way. We now have two cables left from the box, a, right and a, uh, a red and a green. Those get connected to the original things where the interrupter were connected. 
So green goes to green, that's easy. And red goes to red. Who would have thought that? Okay, so to check the timing, I don't really have a light, so I use my voltmeter. Uh, you see it's currently on the on the left cylinder. So let me turn it again until I'm getting close and then I'm getting real slow. Here we go. To adjust the timing is basically like normal timing adjustment. For the right cylinders, you have to turn the housing. And for the left cylinders, you can adjust the contacts. So to adjust it, I'm using a six millimeter. I open the two screws on the sensor and move the sensor. Then I finished everything up and took her for a ride. She ran awesome.